Hey everybody, I recently shot a video about my 20 gallon angelfish tank and I talked about disrupting the nitrogen cycle a little bit and I was getting a little bit of cloudy water in there so I tested my water parameters and it was showing that I had 0.25 parts per million ammonia and in the video I said I was going to do a water change and you know so on and so forth and I wound up not doing a water change on the tank and the reason I did not do a water change on the tank was because I tested my pH and the pH came out right where I expected it to be which was 6.9 my pH is usually right around neutral maybe just below sometimes just above and in this case I got lucky in this tank it is just below uh, neutral it is slightly acidic and so what that means is the ammonia had been converted to ammonium and was no longer harmful to the fish. So at 0.25 parts per million, I wasn't really that worried about it anyway. You kind of do need, if you've disrupted your nitrogen cycle, you do need a little bit of ammonia in there to allow you know, the, the tank to cycle back in. There needs to be a food source for the uh, bacteria to really grow back uh, vigorously and really get your uh, cycle reestablished. So I wasn't too worried about the 0.25 parts per million anyway, but once I saw that my pH was 6.9, I didn't worry about it at all because again at that point it's harmless. So what's going on there is very similar to what's happening when you use ammonia blockers. I don't know if all ammonia blockers work this way, but the ones I've looked at have. I don't remember the brand name, so I'm not going to list any brand names, but I've looked at a few different ammonia blockers to see how they work, and they all work the same way as far as I can tell, and that is that they force an additional hydrogen ion onto the ammonia molecule. Now, I'm not a chemist. I've never studied chemistry, so I'm not going to try to get into the details or anything. I don't understand how all this stuff works entirely. But if you look at the API test kit bottle, you'll see that it says NH3 slash NH4. Test for both of those. NH3 is ammonia. NH4 is ammonium. It's got that additional or fourth hydrogen ion on there. So when you get into a tank that's got acidic water, what acidic water really means is you've got an increased level of free hydrogen ions. That's what pH stands for, it's the power of hydrogen. So once you start getting into acidic water, you start getting into a lot of free hydrogen and you get enough free hydrogen that it begins bonding with the ammonia and converting it into ammonium. So it's a natural process that happens when you get into acidic water. When you use the ammonia blockers, they're forcing this additional hydrogen ion onto the ammonia and they're converting it into NH4 instead of NH3, so it now becomes that harmless ammonium, hence it's blocked. However, it is an unnatural state when you're in a basic condition like that, or your alkaline condition, when you're above the neutral point, you know, any pH above 7, and you're having to force that hydrogen ion on there. There's not enough free hydrogen ions in the water to just stick it on there. So that hydrogen ion wants to come off. And it will come off after anywhere from a few hours to a few days, depending on the pH of your water. So the closer you are to neutral, the longer that bond will last. The further away you get from neutral, the higher your pH gets. If you've got an African cichlid tank with 8.4 pH in it or something like that, and you use an ammonia blocker, that hydrogen ion really wants to come off of there and go back into the water. You may not get a full day uh, out of an ammonia blocker in an environment like that before that ammonium becomes free ammonia again and then becomes harmful. And the problem we run into, and I don't know about other tests, but if you use the API test kit, it tests for both. So if you've got some ammonia in your tank and then you pour in your ammonia blocker and you test again, you're going to get the same result you just got. You don't know whether you're testing for ammonia or ammonium. So I've never been a big fan of using the ammonia blockers. You just never know. It's just, you know, maybe in certain circumstances it might be um, worthwhile. But I usually am in a situation where if I'm getting a little bit of ammonia buildup, I can just do water changes frequently enough that I can physically prevent the ammonia levels from getting high enough that they become harmful to the fish. And it takes a little bit of time, but eventually my cycle will get back into swing and the ammonia gets taken care of internally within the tank. So when I'm 
you know, when I got a tank that's got a pH of 6.9, I simply don't have to worry about it. That ammonia is being converted into ammonium anyway. So what I'm testing for in that tank is the NH4. It's the ammonium, which again is harmless to the fish and I just don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to let that tank go and as long as everything, you know, stays where it is, and as long as the pH stays below 7, it should only take a few days for it to get back uh, into its natural cycle again anyway. I'll leave that substrate alone, you know, disturbing that substrate is what, um, you know, interrupted my cycle and everything will be fine once it gets back into swing. I can also just add some filter material from another tank and that'll help get it back into swing too. But I did want to talk a little bit about the ammonia blockers and how they work and the difference between naturally converting ammonia into ammonium versus forcing it to, which is what those ammonia blockers do. So I hope that was helpful to somebody. I hope that explained something. And now maybe you can save yourself a little time and effort. If you've got a tank that's got uh, slightly acidic water in it, if you've got a tank with you know 6.8 or 6.9 and you've been using ammonia blockers, you don't have to anymore because now you know. So thanks for watching this one. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, this is my new world tank. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you real soon in the next one. Thanks again.